if government has one responsibility, first and foremost, it is to protect the public, period. Holding a firearm as a non-resident makes you a felon in New York. Me picking up and touching one of these guns, I'm breaking a law here. Correct, that's actually considered a felony in New York. It's a felony? It's a felony. Just for me touching a gun? Yep. Because holding a firearm as a non-resident makes you a felon in New York. <laughs> it's pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> it is outrageous. It serves no purpose, yeah. none whatsoever. What, what happened here? What, when did we stop being the United States? I've spoken with Albany police. I've spoken with Troy police. Both of them have said that neither city has a gang problem. Do you think there's any truth to that? They don't want you to know. You can't hang out with your friends. Like, you, you really can't do nothing. It's a gang problem everywhere. It's not just Albany and Troy. MS-13 are thugs. Like, people just don't care about one another. Think about the kids that's growing up. Father's list, mother's list, like, it, it's just so sad. There's a new poll shows Americans believe the Empire State was shot and killed here. is in the lead. The kid was 21 years old. When it comes to corruption. People are gonna do bad, stupid, venial things. Can I get your reaction to So uh, many community members so startled as it comes just hours after last night's fatal shooting. Somebody got to do something. So Albany, Albany is like how I, if I were going to characterize Albany, Albany is to me in my mind is like a little big city town that honestly nobody really gives a damn about unless you live in Albany. It's easy to overlook it. It's, it's dwarfed by the shadow of, of its neighbor that's about three to four hours away, New York City. With Albany, you, you're dealing with essentially a community of people even though it is a city, but a community of people who, they deal with a lot of the same issues that big cities deal with, but without the same level of resources, without the same level of aid or help, without the infrastructure in place to deal with some of these things. So some of these issues are allowed to run amok. And so when you start talking about violence and, and, um, and the criminality involved in places like Albany, um, they're, they're gonna go overlooked. They're, you, because usually they're dwarfed by places like New York City, like Chicago, like the St. Louis's. Um, but they're still affected the exact same way. And so I wanted to show that these policies just don't live in this microcosm of, of big cities. People across the country get hurt by the decisions that are being made from the top. And when you don't or you can't hold your representatives accountable for the state of your community, it, be, it becomes a problem. It's easy to ignore the kind of almost decay that may be happening in certain areas, in certain parts of Albany. And a lot of it, I feel more or less due to neglect on the part of the representatives. You know, they're so hyper-focused on other areas that they don't really pay much attention to it. And then on top of that, they can usually just use the idea of guns to scapegoat it, right? And I got to Albany and I, don't, I didn't see what was essentially a gun issue as much as I saw an economic issue. Just being real. Have you had any personal dealings in your life in terms of just dealing with any violence or anything like that, Nick? I mean, man, I mean, uh, I don't know too many people that hasn't, yeah. especially African-American, yeah. that hasn't had an experience of violence in some case. You know, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've seen, I've witnessed, you know, um, family, friends, community, you know, it's, 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 it's unfortunate, man, but it's, 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 it's kind of freaking normal, man. You know what I mean? It's sad. Yeah, it shouldn't be You know, normal, it's sad, man. But it is. You know? Yeah. I'm a, I was a victim of gun violence myself. I got shot twice. You know, I'm, I'm just reluctant and blessed still to be here. 
you know, I think it's very important to really understand how we can use this as an example to come together and really deal with some of our issues when we have to deal with them outside of picking up a weapon to harm someone who look like me or sound like you. Just the fact that going about handling particular issues that way it is a detriment to not only the individual who lose their lives, but to the family and others as well. When you're dealing with our community, you have a lot of anger, a lot of pain, um, a lot of despair. And, uh, you know, some people don't know how to disperse it, you know, and uh, they start acting out on uh, things that they shouldn't be doing. People have to be willing to change their mindsets. We have to take responsibility and accountability as a minority, as a black male, for our own actions. And so I can't always just say it's somebody else or somebody else doing something to me. I have to take responsibility and work on changing myself. From your perspective, why, why do you think that's so specific to our demographic? Because you know, it's like you said, like being black, from your perspective, why? Why do you think that is? Um, again, man, you know, when you're talking about poverty, man, yeah. you know, extreme poverty, you know, you have a lack of unity in the community, and, uh, you know, you don't have the right representation in offices, political offices. You know, when you have that, yeah. you're going to have what we experience. Okay. Last night, the New York State Senate overwhelmingly passed a bill to toughen up the state's gun laws. This afternoon, the governor signed into law a bill that toughens New York gun laws. It's like chipping away at a boulder, bit by bit. That is how gun laws are changing in New York State. Common sense. Common sense. Governor Cuomo, up for re-election this year, is making a name for himself on gun control. Cuomo also introduced a bill that'll make the NRA furious. Governor Andrew Cuomo saying it's time to expand the SAFE Act. We've had numerous terrible situations where this nation should have stood up and said enough is enough. Cuomo called the bill aggressive and comprehensive. Many layers of this bill, again, very comprehensive. Cuomo said last night that the bill attacks criminals and not lawful gun owners. What happens if you don't recertify? You need to recertify because there is a good chance that you may lose your pistol permit. This is bullshit. It's the same bullshit that they've been trying to pass for decades now. And they do the same thing over and over again because they know all they need to do is come out with some comprehensive bill that addresses guns in the country and it makes it seem like they're doing something. When in reality, what they're trying to do is hide the ball about the real issues, which largely is their failed policies in economics. Because I say it all the time, I was like, as a community, we've got to, we've got to start holding the people who we place in these positions accountable. I agree. And I, I'm not gonna be honest and tell you, it's like I, I was wondering, I was like, how do you, how do we go about doing that? Well, in order to do that, man, you know, you can't do it singly. Yeah. It can't be you, myself, or one other person. It has to be a group, a collective group, on one accord, and we agree, and we have the numbers. You know, in numbers, we can make a difference. In singular, it won't happen. Gotcha. Here in the city of Albany, you have great families. You know, you got people who grew up here, great mothers, great fathers, aunts, uncles, working class individuals. Although, you know, there's a, you know, there's a behavior that comes into play here when it comes to disagreements and a dysfunction you see starts to take place. We want people speaking up about some of the shootings that just took place. Most of our incidents of violence uh, are from personal beefs. They're isolated, and uh, it just takes people to work together to uh, ensure that our kids are safe and that members of our community remain safe. You have to realize if you pick up a gun to handle a dispute, ultimately you're cowering out. Yeah. That's not that's not what people. Um, are taking notion of as uh, the way, or you know, that's G, or yeah. that's gangster. No, that's stupidity. <laughs> and all you, all, only thing you're doing is, is, is helping continue, continue, continue to perpetuate genocidal behavior that we're inflicting on ourselves. 
And uh, we want to make a difference. We want to make a change. And in order to, to do that, to effectively change policy, we have to change ourselves. We have to possess a little intestinal fortitude, a little courage outside of this behavior that a lot of people are afraid to attack and stand up to. And we have to do that. You know, it's just finding the proper solutions. And I feel that a solution, one of the solutions, would be community unity, you know, where everyone would come together and agree and move as one instead of the separate silos, you know, that are that end up working against each other. Yeah, hey, now show them the real, man. Show them Albany, baby. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm showing them what we got going on, man. Word. It's the corner store. You know, all corner stores that say, yo, I, what up, I? Say what up to my peoples, man. Got to do in the documentary in Albany, man, and how we living, man. You know what I'm saying? What we got going on, you feel me? About big thing. What up, baby boy? Everything good? Mm. Salute. Word, so you know. Corner stores, you know, same old, same old. You know, it's like every hood kind of the same. You know, you got a corner store, you know, you got people mobbing, you know, people trying to come out here, make a living, do what they got to do, you know, righteously, unrighteously. You know, there's some, there's some solutions out there. One of them is empowerment. Yeah, which you know, I agree with. You know, I, I, you know, empowering, you know, adults, you know, people who are choosing to handle, use a gun to handle situations, not knowing that their tongue is stronger than a gun. Yeah. You know, I think a one solution here would be in the city of Albany would be first, us who care, who have the fortitude, and we can get out here and make a difference. We get out here and we really hold these kids accountable. We really hold the, the cowardly individuals who's passing these kids guns or bringing them into the community. We hold them accountable. Yeah. You know, and if we call ourselves men, if we call ourselves warriors, then that's our fight. That's our responsibility. So, if in your mind, how does it look? How would a, an ideal situation look as far as like the way the community looks, the way it interacts with, uh, with politicians and police and so forth? How would that look ideally in that regard? Well, the ideal setup would be, you know, there would be people that are uh, in these positions who are one, self-accountable, and that are willing to hold everyone else accountable to make the proper decisions that's needed for us, you know, to make them better. Do you feel like the, do you feel like the lead like the, the the politicians and the leaders that are supposed to be representing this community? You think have they done a good job? Have they done a bad job? I mean, how do you, well in the grand scheme of things, what do you think that fits? Well, I mean, it, it's tough to say. You know, I'm not a politician, nor do I want to be a politician. But I feel that you know, if you don't have the proper support as a politician, or you know, from community or or government, you know, you're not you're not going to be able to do what it is you're set out to do. You know, a lot of us here in the city of Albany, we look at some elected officials down at City Hall, you know, the war leaders, um, common council members as um, saviors. And I think they feed off that. Yeah. They feed off I that. They, they, they feed off that, and it gives them a false sense of power. But they're really, they're really what they really have is a, as a, a privilege of responsibility, right? To make sure that the policies and procedures that are delegated, passed down from the state, that they advocate and make sure that it fit our criteria, exactly. right? So what that has forced us to do is work harder. We have to step up. We have to be responsible for ourselves. We have to present ourselves in a way that is going to help produce change. And it starts with, you can't change somebody else, but you can change yourself. Yeah. So if we all get ourselves right and then reach back and try to help somebody else, that's how we change it. I can shake your hand, but I don't know you. I can sit there and say, how you doing? But getting to know you so I can understand you, so I can help you better. I, I, can't, I can't help you if I don't understand you. And I have to open up my heart and my mind, you know, and that's what it's all about, you know? Now, what do you think that would do if more politicians, more leaders within the area, not just on a local level, but even on the federal, spent more time doing that? How, how much different do you think the community would look in terms of some of the issues that we're dealing with? I think it would change. Yeah. It would change. Because a lot of people, they don't feel that people care. So sometimes they act out on anger, lash out on hurt and pain, you know? Yeah. So I think knowing that, you know, okay, you really care about me, and knowing better, you're gonna do better. The ground is fertile, the area is fertile for change, for something good to come out of this match. So again, like I said, we're having the dialogue, we're having the conversations that we don't usually have. They say you're 
If you notice something that I always notice when it comes to the politicians and our representatives, there's one thing they always never want to talk about. They'll talk about everything under the sun. Of course, they'll, they'll be labor gun control to death. But one thing they don't ever talk about is the economics. And there's no more shining example of that than what you get in Albany. It's all economics. And the representatives and politicians never want to address that because then they'll start to be held accountable for what the hell is going on in these places. There's a clear divide in Albany where it's split. You have this, this very definitive divide between the haves and the have-nots. And you don't get the same level of violence on the have side that you do on the have-not side. I don't think it takes a genius to figure out why that is the case. I don't think anybody has a problem with the people who have having guns. People like Cuomo will have problems with people owning firearms in places that don't have much in the way of economics is largely due in part because he understands the conditions that create the environment that they exist in. And it's places like Albany that don't get the news, that don't make it to the front page, that really tend to suffer the most because they don't have the infrastructure in place. They don't get the same support. They don't get the same type of attention. So it's easier for these politicians to go and fly under the radar when they're not doing anything? Are you actually doing things that help the people in these environments? Or you just neglect it? And then when somebody does shine a light on it, you say, well, no, I'm gonna pass more gun control laws and that will fix it. So now you have people who, who put you in the office because you came there during the election cycle and said you would change things. And then as soon as that was over and you got elected, you left. Nonsense. You're not helping. You're not trying to pass policies that help them. You're doing everything that's within your self-interest and only your self-interest. And then when election season comes around again, then you go over to that side and you say, hey, look, I'm going to do this for you because, you know, those guys over there, those are the bad guys. They won't let me pass more gun control laws. We don't need more of your damn gun control laws. How about you help the infrastructure? How about you help bring back some of the, I don't know, say jobs that were gone or lost how about dealing and addressing those issues with the same fervor that you do gun control? Because it's easy to write on a bunch of sheets of paper and then say, look what I did. You didn't do anything. You passed a law, a law that does nothing but actually affect the same people who probably need the protection the most. The vast majority of these people are good people. They're not bad, they're not criminals, but they live in environments where they're surrounded by them. So they need, they need protection. You're not there to do it. You're not providing it for them. So what do you expect is gonna happen in these environments? They're gonna deteriorate. And you're gonna ask for more gun control. Because gun control clearly is the answer. You've been doing it for decades now and then you still look exactly the same way as it has been for the last decade. But yet you want more gun control. This is evil. Can you save me from a sin?